Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to C4C Apologetics. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about an article. As a matter of fact, this article, I want to say was from, what was it from, Russ? Was it Church Leaders or Christianity Today? Is something like that. Do you even remember? It's a church, yeah, it's Church Leaders, uh, churchleaders.com. Churchleaders.com. Uh, now, do you follow them at all? No, I, I, th I, this is the first I've ever seen or that I've noticed. You know, yeah. I, I may have read articles from them in the past. I normally don't really pay attention to the title of the or the for the article. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? The titles of who publishes it? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah I don't norm normally really pay attention to that unless I find myself on their page, you know, quite often. OK, now when you mean on their page, are you using it metaphorically or using it literally? Um. <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> for those of you that are watching if you would like to see this guy see his face see his background you know go ahead and click the like button and uh let us know that you want to have this guy's video camera working again i guess in the past we had a video camera that he was using and he claims uh it's not working right now and he claims that the next time he's on the channel that uh, he'll have it working again. I don't know if that's the, isn't that what you claim, Russ? But, yeah, that's what I claim. So Name it and claim it. <laughs> so if you're curious as far as what he looks like, uh, just check, you know, you, you, you'll know when you're watching this video because we're going to find him a pretty good photo that resembles <laughs> him pretty clearly because he did me a solid like that too on his YouTube channel. He's got a pretty good pristine photo of me talking about futurism. So right. <laughs> I'm just picking on it you, is man. Pristine. It was the best one I could find. <laughs> and then you only it, it for two seconds. <laughs> yeah, I it highlighted all your uh, predominant features. <laughs> he got me looking like Quasimodo from the head up. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't tell him, guys. Don't tell him. <laughs> So give me a thumbs up, a like, whatever the case is. Say you want to see this guy's real true identity. Clark Kent, Superman, whatever this guy is. <laughs> so anyways, enough of that. Uh, churchleaders.com, I think is where it is. But we're looking at an article, and this is going to be a good primer because finally I have the time to get back into the New Age series that I know most of you guys are actually waiting on and looking forward to. So it's going to be a primer to get back into it. And basically the article title is New Age Christians and the Danger They Don't Know They're In. New Age Christians and the Danger They Don't Know They're In. And so you had a chance to read the article, right, Russ? Yeah, sure did. So basically uh, the Pew Research has done a poll as far as the New Age beliefs and views and, and how it's really infiltrating the church. They have a lot of statistics, a lot of research, a lot of study. And it shows here in the article, they report 41% of Americans, now this is just Americans, believe in psychics, and 42%, which is almost half, believe spiritual energy can be located in physical objects. And the startling thing is, though this is reporting on mm -hmm. Americans per se, this view has been infiltrating the church for quite some time, quite some time. And so, Russ... Uh, what is, can you elaborate a little bit on what is the new age movement in basic layman terms? Oh, wow. That's a lot. Um, so I think, <laughs> so, uh, whew, what is the, in terms of the church, you mean? Just like the views behind, like, what is new age? Whew. Uh, it's I basically we, spiritism. So... Uh, you're asking a really loaded question. <laughs> Why do you think it's loaded? Because what it is encompasses a lot of different okay. aspects, different okay. things, different ideologies, mm -hmm. um, and so, that leads into talking about its origin, where it came from, you know. Yeah, you gotta go through all that. Mm -hmm. I know you're like me, and you love to talk about, you need to, you, you love giving very, not long, but very specific uh, details as far as different answers to questions, things like that. But as far as what... You know, what are some common beliefs in the new age? How, how about that? Okay, so you talk um, about spiritism, right? Yeah, spiritism. Um, there's like there's similarities. If anybody's familiar with like the Kabbalah, um, do elaborate. Uh, okay, so there are similarity, similarity between, between the Kabbalah and like different new age ideas. Um, they both, you know, encourage looking at uh, the Bible and other things in a very symbolic way. 
like there's it's like a hyper so when you read uh the uh the kabbalah view of genesis they would say well the tree of life wasn't a literal tree it represented a b and c you know sin represented this so they just try to make it all a giant allegory and so they 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 teach that the Bible is just a series of allegorical stories with uh, spiritual meanings that can help one ascend to a higher plane of spirituality. Mm. Um, and New Age is similar. Um, if you want to really understand New Age in a nutshell, just look at like Hindu Hinduism and things like that. It, that's a lot of New Age philosophy in, in it, and they're very similar. So, um, you know, you can you can look at the origins and, and where it came from, and you can really trace it back um, pretty far. But it's uh, at the end of the day, it's all occultism and witchcraft and sorcery. And I mean, if we were to really boil it down to what it really is. Yeah. So for anybody that is unfamiliar with what is the new age, basically, if you check out our video series or uh, on one of the series it talks about what is the new age movement specifically and then there's another video that talks about common beliefs held within the new age and kabbalah if i'm not if i'm not misunderstanding is really a jewish mysticism mm -hmm. uh offshoot of uh what is, what should we call it the new age idea and the occultism but then you also have like you were mentioning in hinduism there's a there's a lot of blended beliefs from a lot of world religions and views that sort of make up the new age movement, the new age thought. Uh, you got Buddhism with the idea of the fact that there is no suffering, there's no pain. It's all something that is a mental construct in our mind that we have to learn how to reshape our perception and then live with it. The higher elevation of enlightenment, sense of this awakening within our souls to know who we truly are, our being. Uh, there's the view that we are one with not only nature, but we are one with the universe, that there's no distinction between us and the force of the universe, that we are one and the same, sort of like this pantheistic view. And there's so much to it. And what's, what's startling is this view has been, it's not is, it has been creeping in not only to the church, but into worship songs as well. And I know in the new age video that we're working on, on C4C channel, we're going to be talking about influences inside the church and so uh check that video out you'll see exactly who i'm talking about what i'm talking about whether it's bill johnson and bethel music and some other ministries if i dare call them ministries because they're not ministering to god they're not ministering to people they're actually ministering to what i would believe is uh lucifer mm -hmm. so but this article well, right what's up so um just for anybody who's listening i i recommend and i'm, I'm pretty sure you, you might recommend this book uh or, or plan to it's called the kingdom of the occult by walter martin um it's really good but one of the one of the quotes from his book that, book right there. <laughs> that red one right there right right above that booger on his finger right <laughs> so uh so this is what it, this is how he kind of defines it right he's in his uh ch in the chapter of eastern mysticism in the new age it says a sh this is how he pretty much his take on it, a strange blend of 19th century spiritism, mysticism, and humanism took the name the New Age movement and quickly evolved into a bolder, more organized revival of ancient occultism. See, there's a, uh, if you really want to know, like the history, check out Kingdom of the Occult. Walter Martin also has a specific book, a smaller book, probably about that thick, uh, called The New Age, if you will. And it's a book that I have at the house. It's actually a pink book, surprise. Uh, I think pink's a manly color. You know, I don't know what everybody else's thoughts are on that. But regardless, uh, I think his video four in the New Age series that we're working on talks about the history talks about the Theosophical Society, Madame Blavatsky, and a lot of the key influencers uh, that helped bring this view and this thought really to light in the public and uh, actually is what really got a lot of people on board with this occultic view of what is now known as the New Age movement to include the harmonic convergence in the 80s, I believe it was. And so check that out.
But so with a basic cursory overview of the new age movement, talking about, okay, it's a a cultic view. It's a lot of thoughts that take your mind from actually trying to see what does scripture say? What is, what does this say? And looking at, okay, what are the spiritual uh, analogies? What, what are the spiritual allegories? Uh, Where can I find healing? Where can I find uh, manipulation in the physical environment? Things like that. Mysticism, uh, occultic uh seances if you will psychics horoscopes there's a lot of it because a lot of it also has to deal with not going to scripture for answers to life's problems but looking to the stars astrology looking to codes and numerology and trying to find these answers elsewhere other than a relationship with god so that's really one thing this article is going to be talking about is christians within the church and the dangers there are within the new age now Before we actually dive into the main uh, thrust of this article, I want to talk about uh, the three marks of the occult. All right. The three marks of the occult that this article talks about is first, how do you know something's in a cult? Basically, one is the disclosure or communication of unknown information unavailable to humans through normal means. And so the receiving of information that otherwise would be unknowable to you and I. Uh, The second thing would be the placings of persons in contact with supernatural powers, paranormal energies, or demonic forces. And so being in contact with that. And then the third mark would be an attempt to gain and master paranormal power in order to manipulate or influence other people into certain actions. And we can have this, we can think of the thought as far as like voodoo dolls and things like that, where you're manipulating uh, pain in an, another individual by poking this voodoo doll with a pin and causing them pain, whether an arm, shoulder, chest, whatever the case is. And so we're talking about the first one, the disclosure communication of unknown information unavailable through normal means. And now I know some of this stuff, some people are going to be like, oh, no, it's just harmless fun, you know, type deal. But what the article brings out is things like horoscopes, fortune telling, psychic hotlines, and tarot cards. Mm -hmm. Russ, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Are these harmless? harmless I want to add add one to the list um, or maybe uh, expand one of those. The second Uh one where it says fortune telling. Now, I know for a lot of people, and I'm going to say this, it might cause a little shock at first, but let me explain. Fortune cookies. I like fortune cookies. I think everybody has read a fortune cookie. Um, In and of themselves, all there are is a cookie with a piece of paper in it. But if, if you're a person that opens up a fortune cookie and you take it seriously, like somehow that has any bearing on your life, in any meaningful real way other than it's about to give you a, a little bit of carbs it that's a danger that's a slippery slope and that's it's wrong to do that you don't open up a fortune cookie believing that it's true believing that it's real and then go and take the numbers and go play the lottery hoping that you're going to win why is that so, dangerous because you you're you are seeking guidance you're seeking uh, spiritual guidance and life guidance from from an occultic thing. It, I know it's it's fortune telling is what it is. That's what it, that's why they call it a fortune cookie. I'm not saying fortune cookies are inherently evil, so don't misunderstand. Right. Yeah. Anybody that's listening, go go get your Chinese food. Go open your fortune cookie, but then laugh about how silly it is because that's what it is. It's not. It's the same thing with horoscopes. It, it, they they incorporate or employ the same uh, method of giving very generic uh, f- fortunes, okay? And it can apply to almost any situation, almost to any person. And so it, it convinces people um, of its legitimacy. It's like you're going to come across – a sum of money within the next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you got a job and payday happens. We're like, holy jumping jokes of that Batman. This came true. This came right? true. Yeah. And so, you know. and then it causes people to start looking into it a little bit more and a little bit more. Next thing you know, they're calling the psychics and they're going to get their palms read. And so you, I would sort of equate this 
sort of like how a lot of people would argue that marijuana is like a gateway drug sort of opens the door for experimenting with other drugs that you know horoscopes and uh, fortune fortune cookies would really be a sort of gateway uh, into the occultic practices you know i mean would you agree mm, oh yeah definitely you know there's a lot of people that i've known in my life that have made life decisions life altering decisions by astrology and looking at constellation mm -hmm. signs things like that when you get into the topic of horoscopes and you're looking at okay what who do i most uh who am I most compatible with a Leo, a Taurus, whatever the case is for anybody that's interested in how astrology plays a, a dangerous role. Uh, check out the video that we did on the age of Aquarius. Yep. And it and the always that... uses fear to, to manipulate. It's always mm -hmm. fear because if they can get you afraid of something, they, they, that's one of the most powerful controlling things, uh, manipulative things that a person use, or any entity uses uh, is fear you can control people through fear. And uh, that's what a lot of these horoscopes and, you know, you get a bad fortune. Hey, don't go over here today because <laughs> something really bad is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if a person goes and, you know, the chances of something bad happening to you each day, I mean, mm -hmm. there's things that bad, bad happen to us every day. Like you, you can stub your toe, you can get a splinter, you can get a flat tire on the side of the road. Bad or things happen every day. You can go ahead and <laughs> bang your finger with a hammer, putting in floors. Mm -hmm. Yes, hurt. because you left your house today. It, is it? <laughs> yeah. Well, this happened yesterday. Oh, well, yeah. Well. Because I left my house yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, you should, you should have read your horoscope. It would have told you that places to avoid. That's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it, you know, you're, you're on to something because... So these horoscopes and these fortune cookies, right? And there are some people that like take them to heart and they're like, you know, holy smokes, Batman, this actually came true. Uh, how, how would you articulate why something may have came true? Is it just the whole general generalities of the fortune cookie or the horoscope is, could there be something else at work? Mm, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. There, so it, the, um, the degree at which other things are involved depends on uh, whether or not a evil spirit or a demon has you in their sights and they're really trying to come after you because mm -hmm. what they'll, what they'll do is they'll cause things to happen in, in a more of a supernatural way that will, that will really truly reinforce the idea in an unbeliever's mind or even a weak believer's mind that this is there's legitimacy to this and it'll uh, cause a person to really um, pay more attention and give more. Uh, I, I don't know if, what, what word I'm looking for, but it'll, it'll definitely cause a person to dig deeper into these occultic things and in these satanic things at the end of the day, that's what they are. Um, but you know, sometimes though it is very just generalities. They speak in generalities, like we said, and there could mm -hmm. be just once a person mentions something like that, and and they put the the, so if they say, hey, uh, tomorrow since you're, I don't know, uh, Quackitarius or whatever, um, that must be a new sign. I don't know. Uh, I, <laughs> since you're, you know, wh whatever your sign is, tomorrow you're gonna have a really good day, and. Or, hey, because you're this, you really influence people in a positive way you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're going to walk if you if you believe in it at all or even are just curious of whether or not it's true. You're mm -hmm. going to you're going to start to perceive your daily interactions through that lens. And so mm -hmm. you're going to your your perception of reality is going to be slanted because you read that horoscope. And so you're going to be looking for those things, you know. It's just the way it goes. That's true. It's like, ha have you ever wondered, like we, uh, my wife just bought a Honda CRV and we've never really seen CRVs on the road before, but now that we bought the CRV, now it's like they're everywhere. That's a you great know, analogy. I, I forget what, what the term is called, but now that we have one, we're a lot more aware of, uh, their presence all over the road. And, you know, I, I could, 
you know, sum it up sort of like that is what you were saying is the fact that now that you have this influence in your mindset, now you're going to be looking for it everywhere. So mm -hmm. two other things they were talking about was tarot cards and psychic hotlines. Now I've got to go ahead and I want to talk a little bit about the psychic hotlines because I have a personal experience with this, unfortunately, is uh, those of you that watch any of my other videos, you may have heard this story before, but uh, bear with me. So I, I don't remember how old I was. I may have been like 14, 12, something like that, whatever the case is. And we were in Pennsylvania and we went ahead and saw this lady named Rose. It was my family, my parents, and my brother and me. And apparently this lady uh, claimed to be a, a psychic and my grandparents had been to uh, talk to her before. At least my grandmother had been. And she was like, oh, you got to check her out, you know, so we don't live in Pennsylvania. We're actually visiting my grandparents. And so we actually went up there and, and saw Rose. And I don't really know everything she said to everybody else, but I do know what she said to me. And I've never met this lady a day in my life. And uh, so we're in there talking and she talks about how she believes that I have this gift inside of me, this possible ESP, whatever the case was. And uh, she wants to give me crystals you know, and I ended up taking a crystal and, and we talked about it a little bit, but one of the freakiest things that happened during that consult or that conversation or counseling, whatever it was, was she was trying to tell me about a former life of mine. And then she started telling me about my current life. And she mentioned that I had an iguana. Now, how many people do you know that are about like 12 years old or however old I was actually own an iguana as a pet you know and, and that's something that was very uncommon and not only that she if i remember correctly she knew the name of my iguana her name was stucy she was about four feet long and this was information that there's no way she could have known personally because i've never met the lady this was before facebook this was before myspace and all this other uh, social media stuff uh, my parents, I know my parents didn't say nothing. My grandmother, I would doubt they would even bring it up in conversation. But somehow this woman knew that I had an iguana named Stussy. And to this day, I still remember the, the setting, the room that we're sitting in and the conversation. And then my grandfather at the time was a, a little did we know he was going to be diagnosed with cancer. And during a conversation with my father, Rosa told my father that uh, he, he's not going to be around much longer, that he needs to go ahead and see him. Again, kind of general, but she didn't know that my grandfather had cancer. Now, this is on my dad's side. The grandparents on my mom's side is the one who saw this lady. So the, my grandfather on my father's side didn't, never seen this lady a day in her life. And so she knew he had this cancer and uh, he's going to pass away in, in the coming months. And you know, truth be told, that happened. So really the question is, how does this lady know this information, you know, that my grandfather has cancer, he's going to die in a few months, that I had an iguana, not only had an iguana, but the iguana's name was Stussy. That's kind of specific. And so I've never forgotten that experience. And I've never forgotten how, how much she was interested in getting me to do and learn what she was doing trying to teach me and claimed I had this aura about me. And so the only thing I can chalk it up, because again, there's no way she knew this stuff was in the witch of Endor case, you know, it saw going to the witch of Endor, trying to get Samuel conjured up is that I believe that there was demonic forces that were working side by side with her. And that like you sort of alluded to earlier, Russ, or you mentioned that these demons can manipulate situations to go ahead and make the outcome uh, that they need to make happen. Like if it's a fortune cookie, you know, they can manipulate a situation to make a fortune cookie or a horoscope happen. Mm -hmm. And I totally believe that's what was happening here in this case was, you know, she was in cohoops with some sort of demon that had this information on me that related to her. And she told me it to try to get my interest level in the occult to get me down this path of occultism and spiritism. And to this day, I've never forgotten that, you know, an iguana mm -hmm. named Stussy, who knows that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so with psychics, you know, I, I totally have that experience, but tarot cards, not so much. I, I used to play with them as a kid, but 
Do you have any experience with tarot cards and what exactly they are? Well, I know what they are. Um, and I know that when you're starting to get into like tarot cards and Ouija boards and things like that, you're, you're inviting these, these types of spirits to come. And if they can deceive you, they will. And, and the, the simple fact that a, if a person is at that point to where they're looking into those things, they're like, they're pretty much primed for deception because they're looking for something um, outside of the word of God and outside of reality or, or what, what reality should be uh, and they're They're delving into things that they shouldn't. Um, you know, when you look at the, the story of, uh, uh, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 16, and uh, first starting verse 16, it says, And it came to pass, as he went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. And the same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Um, so, you know, these, these uh, spirits are what's behind. The Bible reveals to us, like you said, the witch indoor and stuff like that had a familiar spirit. It's, uh, it's these spirits, these evil spirits, these demons that are able to do things that we as people can't. And, uh, and they want to be, uh, they want you to be awestruck. You know, they want you to, to really believe in their power because it's it is a pride thing to yeah. to them to an extent but it's uh, also a thing where they hate god and they want they hate you and they want you to they want to draw you away from god and where they can manipulate you and mm -hmm. and eventually destroy you in your life that that that's the main goal you know the enemy what jesus say about the enemy you know uh he wants to steal kill and destroy and that's uh where all this stuff leads to ultimately yeah. is destruction. Now I know, you know, once you start talking to somebody about like fortune telling, it's almost undoubtedly uh, that they think of this lady sitting in like a sort of like a tent area with a big old crystal ball. And she's looking into the crystal ball and trying to see the future. And they neglect the fact that this stuff is happening in in ways that seem very harmless, if you will, mm -hmm. whether it's the horoscopes, whether it's the fortune tellings, whether it's, you know, just astrology as a general, I, I imagine not many people are into tarot cards, but this stuff is anything but harmless. And uh, so people just need to have the right idea in their minds when they're, you know, thinking about the occultism. And there's something else I was going to say, I it, I'm getting to the point of my age where I have so many more brain farts. It's like I'm in a car and it's just, <laughs> I need to change some of the cylinders because I keep having some misfires left and right. And it, you know, I'm driving down the wrong, down the road and all of a sudden I hear a misfire. And so I don't know, are you that old yet, Russ? Yeah. Yeah. That's all you got to say. <laughs> yeah. What were we talking about? Exactly. And so I forget what, I, there was another one that I wanted to bring up, but uh, did it have to do with the, that kind of the list that we're kind of going over? A little bit like well, washing cars. There's another washing. another avenue where people try to get information from uh, to go ahead and make life decisions. And they think it's, you know, oh, it's no big deal. But anyways, maybe you'll come back to me. I want to talk mm -hmm. about the second aspect of it. The second part of the article that talks about the marks of the occult, mm -hmm. which they're talking about placing a person's in contact with supernatural powers, paranormal energies or demonic forces. Now they bring up the ideas of like crystals. Uh, trying to summon up, conjure up deceased individuals, things like that, mediumship. Uh, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? You know, can you talk a little bit about the occultic mark as far as trying to gain powers or people? Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. So the it's it's very like if you look at what Satan tempted Eve with in the garden. It was something like in her mind was something that uh, it was, the tree was uh, good for food and to be desired to make one wise, and um, and so it was. It, it's 
it's the uh, carrot on a stick, or it's a uh, the cheese on the mouse trap, if you will. Mm. It's a it's a it's a trap. It's a trick. They they these it offers you something that you think you really want, but but in the end, it, it's uh, again it leads to destruction. Um, you know, it, it has some things listed here like uh, spiritual energy and a crystal and. And believe it or not, there are Christ. I know Christians who are into this stuff. You know what I mean? And go ahead. Where that, because I know like there's a medicinal practices where people believe that they can lay crystals on certain parts of the body and certain types of mm -hmm. uh, rocks give off energy to go ahead and heal. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like even with yoga and its chakra points, mm -hmm. and you got to unlock all these chakra points and you'll experience. Uh, spiritual healing as well as physical healing mm -hmm. and all this weird stuff man um but <clears throat> you know there there are a lot of different things that people that people use in the occult like am anything like amulets charms um what's known as fetishes uh astral projection is another another thing mm -hmm. um you know like you mentioned the thing about the aura earlier mm -hmm. You know, it's some kind of energy uh, that a person's body or spirit produces. And apparently there's ways you can read a person's aura. Automatic writing, which is uh, mm -hmm. kind of like fortune telling and stuff, um, similar to like what a Ouija board is and does. Um, the, like we mentioned, chakras, um, channeling, allowing your, yourself to be uh, open to a spiritual entity and allow that entity to speak through you. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned crystals. You know, a lot of people use crystals um, that contain energy mm. that apparently they feel like they can draw the energy um, <laughs> and, and put the, what they do is they take those crystals and they put them on those chakra points mm -hmm. where these supposed chakra points are. And these crystals are supposed to unlock these chakra points. Um, but in reality, all you're doing is putting a, putting a rock on you <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And which can actually lead to some spiritual bondage and stuff like I, it's it's crazy i think like i i really i understand why people go after this stuff you know mm -hmm. for one it's uh it's mystical and it's uh it's fantastical and mm -hmm. there's there's knowledge to be had that you wouldn't be able to get any other way and you can know uh if this person likes you or that, <laughs> right. A lot yeah. of times that's what it kind of starts at, you know, like a lot of people want to know, like, am I going to meet my soulmate or, Hey, does this person <laughs> that I have a crush on, do they like me or yeah. and things like that? Or, you know, maybe some people's motive are money, you know, like, am, am I going to be rich or, you know, they want right. those types of things and they want their in, in they're searching for something. And, uh, I don't know, man. It, it, well, it, this is a big subject. Well, I know there's a there's different candles that different. I won't call them like witchcraft stores, but they're not witchcraft stores per se. But you know, they're new age occultic stores that they believe that there are spells put on certain candles. They're shaped, cut certain ways, and different amount of wicks, whatever the case is. That if you have an issue that you're going through, like you keep having nightmares or mm -hmm. you just can't sleep or you have this issue going on in your life, whatever the case is that you can go to one of these stores and they can cut shape and produce a type of candle that supposedly has supernatural powers within it that will go make that outcome, a positive outcome, sort of manipulate the environment, things like that. And for anybody that's being really duped by that, again, if you just look at scripture, you just really think about personal experiences I would just argue clear as day that these are just demonic forces that are manipulating the environment to either one, get you into the interest or two, keep you and get you deeper into the interest. Because if say, for instance, like poltergeist, you know, I don't believe in ghosts or anything, but say like there's demons, you know, and there's poltergeist in my house, whatever the case is, and they're moving stuff, causing noise, whatever the case is. So I go to one of these occultic stores and I, you know, tell them what's going on and they claim to be like, they're, they're good, which is, this is good power, you know, supernatural power. It'll rid these evil forces, whatever the case is. So I buy this candle. I go ahead and do everything that they tell me to do with it. And then the very next day it's gone. You know, I'd never have a poltergeist again. 
now that just piqued my curiosity, my interest level goes through the roof on how this candle actually works. But is the power really found in the candle or is the power found in the demonic forces that are manipulating the environment? Because ultimately, mm -hmm. like you said, Russ, that Jesus said that the thief seeks to steal, kill and destroy. And the fact that if they can get us to look more into these occultic methods, then that's less we're looking into God's word and the relationship with God. And so ultimately, I believe that's really the end game uh, for these is to keep pulling us farther and farther away from Christ. And mm -hmm. in any way, shape or form, they can do that. They'll do that. And so I can so, clear. Huh? So um, one of the one of the ways that um, that I've that I've found and that I've realized um, that demons work behind this stuff mm -hmm. in, in a more one of the more malicious ways. Um, again, like I said, fear is a is a great tool uh, for controlling people. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that Satan uses the most is fear. So what what Satan would do is. What he'll, if for a person that believes like, oh, you know, I got to burn this sage in order to ward off evil spirits and yeah. bad fortune. Um, what, what these demons will do um, in a very organized way is they will begin to harass a person and cause a lot of uh, bad things to happen in a person's life mm -hmm. where if they if they're you know a person who's starting to look into this stuff and then then they'll it'll be suggested or through their research they'll be like well good a good way for this to stop to stop this spiritual attack is uh well i need to burn some sage right okay and they'll go and they'll burn some sage or whatever it is you mm -hmm. know that the you know the occult world's telling them to do mm -hmm. and uh, in order to get you to believe that there's power in that sage rather than power in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. what, what they'll do is they'll back off of you for a little while mm -hmm. in order to get you to believe that that sage actually worked. Mm -hmm. It's very manipulative because a person who doesn't know any better, they're, they're going to be convinced, well, I burn, all I know is that I was having problems, I burned the sage, and now sure. life seems to be good. And it's a trap, and it's a trick. It's all it is it's bait and switch it's uh you know just distracting you and anyway that's just yeah. one of their one of their methods uh, i know i know that because i've seen it in the lives of uh, friends and family who are into that kind of stuff now, yeah, you mentioned earlier astral projection and uh again this is something that i have like a loose personal experience with uh not that i really you know, had a full out of body experience, if you will, for those that are unfamiliar astral projection is the thought is the, the view that you can actually separate your spirit from your body and get enter into the spiritual plane, the spiritual realm, which, you know, I would agree it does definitely exist, but, uh, it's definitely not a good godly practice to, uh, to, you know, partake in. But I remember one day uh, as a younger person, I was laying there, I was laying on the floor on my back facing my iguana cage just watching Stussy you know in the cage whatever the case was and then to this very day I can still remember it clearly I'm laying my legs are straight laying on my back just looking at this cage and I swear my left leg rises up but I kid I kid you not I see this like my leg is still on the ground. I can see my left leg still on the ground, but yet I see my left leg raised up, sort of like I'm trying to do like a, a fly. You know how you do you know, scissors or whatever they're called? Mm -hmm. So I'm laying there and my left leg just raises up and then it goes back down. I saw two left legs. I saw my actual leg and then I saw like, it sort of looked like a hologram, whatever the case was, rise up. And so I thought that was really cool. And I was trying to do it again and manipulate again and again, and I couldn't do it again. But to this day, I can still recall that experience and picture it in my mind clear as day. There was mm -hmm. a very strong tug of me to get into this occultic view, which, you know, thankfully I didn't really get into, mm -hmm. but, uh, that that uh astral projection and from the people that you actually listen to whether it's dorian virtue or stephen bankars of reasons for jesus ministries uh you can hear their experience with the astral projection at first it's fun and it's cool and it's exciting but then later 
it starts taking a totally different turn. And so if anybody that has done it, get out of it. Anybody that's interested, don't, don't do it. And uh, like I said, all this stuff is just a gateway to a deeper dive into the occult. Yeah. All but, you need is Jesus. All you need is the word of God <laughs> and Jesus Christ, man. There's, there's more than enough fulfillment uh, in Christ, enough joy. You don't need all that other stuff. Um, David Hunt or Dave Hunt mm -hmm. has has great video documentaries that he has put together over the years about this very topic. Dave Hunt, huh? I yeah. didn't even know that. Dude, so he was the really, really good. Brian Cause. He passed away, but the Brian Call ministry, right? Yeah. So he yeah, he has one called Revival of Evil slash the Cult Explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, or Dave Hunt has another one called Occult Invasion of the Church. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's really, really good stuff. He, he awesome. talks about how astral projection is actually something that just goes on in a person's mind. It's not actually reality. Uh -huh. Um, but, it, but the devil convinces these people that they're actually being, you know, going other places in yeah. the spirit type of thing. Yeah. Uh, it's quite interesting. But, uh, the third thing that this article talks about is marks of an occult is any attempt to gain and master paranormal power in order to manipulate or influence other people in certain mm -hmm. situations. And mm -hmm. so trying to gain this power to go ahead and change the situation or influence people, sort of like the old movie Love Potion number nine. And, you know, it's an old yeah. song as well, where you're trying to find this, this potion, even the movie Shrek, the movie mm -hmm. Shrek, I, what was it? It's the third one, I think it was. So you have Shrek, you have Far, Far Away, and then you have Forever After, I think it is, maybe. And I think mm -hmm. it's the third one where he drinks a potion to turn himself into a guy, you know, as opposed to an ogre. And then if he kisses uh, his wife before, you know, a certain time, then he can stay that guy and she can stay a woman instead of a female ogre. And so it's this idea of a love potion. And these are some things. Do you find any validity in any of this stuff or the practicing of spells or any of stuff like that? Well, it's the same thing. Um, if so, just a scenario, right? Just to kind of get you give people an idea of how this, this stuff works behind the scenes. So a person um already kind of they dabbled in it before with the Ouija board, maybe, mm -hmm. or tarot cards or fortune telling or, or something like that. So they think there's some legitimacy to it. Um, uh, or perhaps they know that there's uh, legitimacy to it. But then, you know, one of the things that the devil uses is, like you said, like this love potion <laughs> type uh, mentality yeah. where people will want, because of lust, not really, not love, but lust, mm -hmm. they're going to want. Uh, to fulfill that lustful desire mm -hmm. and and so they will a lot of times that lust that that desire uh, will drive a person to go online or seek out you know love potions love spells um, call a psychic or a witch or a sorcerer or something like that and, and tr to try to manipulate okay, their surroundings in the world and the people around them to be attracted to them, mm. you know? And, and so what the, what the demons will then do, perhaps, I guess, if they feel like it, they will, um, then anybody who is, uh, susceptible to demonic influence and temptation in that area, mm -hmm amongst the people that you interact with on a daily basis, the, that demon will then entice that person to be attracted to you in some kind of lustful way and, and tempt them if it's possible to do that. And I guess uh, it also depends on if they feel like it, because you know, let's be honest, a person um, a lot of times think that they are manipulating these spirits and controlling these spirits to do their bidding. But at the end of the day, um, you're not going to make that spirit do anything it doesn't want to do. And they're the ones manipulating you. So you need to get out of it if you're into it and you know, get back right with Jesus or get saved. One of them, whatever. So you're talking about the, the emotional side, the love side. 
Mm-hmm. Is there any validity to voodoo dolls? Because that'll be one thing that a lot of people are thinking of is, you know, if I have if I have beef with somebody, I can, you know, get a, a voodoo mm-hmm. doll and start pricking mm-hmm. uh, different parts of the body and whether it causes mm-hmm. pain or injury or situations. Is there any validity to those? Are those hoaxes There's, or what? what's the deal with voodoo? No, dolls? It, it's as real. It's as real uh, as the demon behind it wants it to be. So you got to understand. So like a person, a person who's maybe a witch doctor already Uh um, uh, or who who does practice voodoo, who actually has in their in their within their radius. okay, familiar spirits or demons, Uh um, it'll it'll probably work for them or seem to work for them because they have the eyes of these demons Mm -hmm. um, on them, on him or her. And so if they were to make a voodoo doll uh, of, of somebody they know and then start poking it or whatever, those, right. those demons, those demons will, it, will go in, maybe cause some pain in that joint or whatever, uh, or that part of their body or, may, or cause something to happen where that person like stubs their toe or smashes their hand or, you know, hurts their back. And uh, but it, it really depends, because if a person just is walking down the French Quarter in New Orleans and they walking through uh, and they, they see a stand where they're like selling these uh, voodoo dolls and they're like, oh, I'm in New Orleans. I'm going to go ahead and buy a voodoo doll. And they take that voodoo doll home. There is and that goes and this goes for everything on this list that we talked about today. Crystals, tarot cards, Ouija boards, uh, sage, all of it. None of those things have actual power in and of themselves it's the demon or spirit behind it that's going to get you to believe that that thing has power so that's why i said it has it has as much power as that demon wants to give it and if you just go and you buy a voodoo doll from the french quarter it doesn't mean automatically that if you poke that voodoo doll it's going to cause somebody pain or harm or anything like that Mm -hmm. Um, it would have to have the attention of a demon Mm-hmm. And then that demon ha- would have to be willing to do it to, in order, maybe, you know, and it has to want to manipulate you in order to get that thing to work. And so, um, you know, it's not like this. Um, it's not like this general rule, like, OK, all voodoo dolls everywhere work or all Ouija boards everywhere mm-hmm. work or all, you know, tarot cards everywhere work (laughs) it's a it's a matter of because demons and spirits um evil spirits they are limited where they can be at any given time and and so like if you're poking a voodoo doll and there's no demon that you you know is there trying to get you to believe that it works um nothing's going to happen you're just going to be poking a a a paper doll or whatever it is you know okay so i was yeah i was going to ask you you know if if I got beef with somebody in another state, you know, how do they work? You know, is it the ability them of them sort of like, for lack of better words, teleporting, or is it Mm. communication? I imagine they don't, you know, have cell phones or anything like that. You know, (laughs) you know, they might have telepathy, you you know what I mean? How does that work? But uh, yeah, so that's, so with the occultism and, and the idea, the basic rudimentary definition of the occult is really gaining secret knowledge. Uh, all these things are different ways that people try to gain secret knowledge, whether they're trying to figure out life's decisions, whether they're trying to uh, speak to a deceased loved one, and they have good intentions and they just want to see them, or uh, whether they're trying to manipulate situations and people and really gain influence in the world today. All of this is contrary to what scripture has to say. And really, if you look at it, all of these things the purpose is to gain information, gain ability apart from the works of God. And uh, that's specifically what, you know, Lucifer seeks to do and, and all his minions, if you will, seeks to do is to continue to draw us and pull us away uh, from God and from Jesus. And so if you have any personal experiences you'd love to share, you know, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to talk about that pretty much covers the three aspects of the occult that this article talked about that I at least wanted to hit on a little bit? Is there anything else you'd like to say before we tie this thing up? No, that I mean, I, I would suggest people like steer clear of all this <laughs> completely mm-hmm. and totally. Um, and, you know, 
if you're a Christian and you you hear us talking about this stuff and you're fascinated by it, don't be. Yeah. Okay. Don't be fascinated. It, it that's just a that's just a, a trap. Don't don't even consider it. Don't even think about it. Um, Jesus Christ, man, it, and God, just go to Him in prayer. If it's His will for you to to uh, to have those prayers answered, um, then it will. And, it, and if he, if it's part of his will, then it's going to be a good thing. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a blessing to your life. Um, if you're praying for a spouse, wait on the Lord, you know, and, and you wait for the one that God has for you. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a blessed marriage and uh, just anything for your job, anything. You pray and you wait on God and he's going to put you where he wants you to be. And uh, it's going to be a blessing. And you're going to have that peace and that joy being in his will. And uh, that's where you want to be. You want to be in the will of God, not in the hands of the devil. And, and ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, God is the one that created uh, you and I. God's the one that sent his son to die for you and I to find eternal life uh, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross 2,000 years ago. Is there no better person to help guide you and me in our lives than the one that sent his son to die for for us. And so God knows what's best for your life. God knows what's best for my life. Sometimes the answers we get are kind of delayed. Sometimes the answers we get is a flat out no, but that's where a relationship with God and relationship with Jesus comes into play to really trust that he knows what's best for us in us to just submit humbly and continue to bow the knee and continue to be in prayer. And so if you're getting everything that your heart desires in life, you may want to check to find out where is that coming from? And is everything that you're receiving that your heart desires, is that putting you closer to God or is that drawing you further away from God? Because I would submit if you're getting everything your heart desires, unless your heart is pure, and I know what God says in a few different areas of scripture as far as how wicked, how uh, manipulative the heart can be, then you might want to check where these uh, desires and these situations are coming from because they may not be coming from God. Mm. And uh, so really think, is this pulling you closer to or pushing you farther away from relationship with God and Jesus Christ? So that's going to be it for today. This is I think the second or third time we've done like an article review. Uh, if you have any particular articles you'd like us to just discuss and I like having various people on here and a group of people because like one person said in a comment that it does offer differing perspectives. And I think that's what we're striving for as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, A unity in the fact of the foundation of Jesus Christ, but differing perspectives and different experiences. So if you have any ideas on future articles or you want to submit a topic, whatever the case is, let us know in the comments. You can shoot me an email at c4capologetics at gmail.com. Uh, go ahead, check out the brand dialogues as well. Hey, Russ, where can they find your content? And when are you going to uh, actually update your content? So check it out. No, so, check it out. <laughs> and when are you um, going to change the picture of me and my futurism? Check out the photo. Go to <laughs> Russ's channel, the brand dialogues YouTube channel. Look at the interview right now. He has two videos posted. One of them's on futurism, where I go ahead and talk about the eschatological view of futurism as opposed to preterist. And uh, check out the photo. Let, leave Russ a comment there if you think that's a great photo or a Quasimodo photo. He thinks he so. looks like a goober, but I'm t- I- <laughs> <laughs> don't change it now. <laughs> but what were you saying? Anyway. When are you gonna get some more content? All right, so um, I'm a, I'm actually in the, in the works with a couple of uh, other people, uh, friends of mine, and uh, we're gonna be launching. Uh, this back up and getting it going again and uh we have some ideas and we're excited about i want to i don't want to speak too soon but uh and when he has when he says friends he does not include me in that because this (laughs) is you're gonna be part of that yeah well (laughs) we're gonna have anyway well i know you're you're a busy guy too but we're gonna get you on whenever you can (laughs) um but the uh it's the podcast can be found on CastBox. It can be found on uh, Apple Podcasts or iTunes. It can be found on Google Podcasts, and I just recently put it up on Audible too. So oh, you can okay. find you can find them all on Audible, the yeah. Audible app. Nice. Or you can just do a Google search, and it'll come up on Google too. The Berean Dialogues. Um, but yeah, we we do have some big plans coming up um, that I'm really excited about. So, me too. 
Awesome, man. So uh, we're going to have links to all that in the descriptions of this video and any other video that we have with uh, the Berean Dialogues on our channel. <laughs> and so be praying for both our ministries. And, and again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Uh, the more you guys do that, the more the algorithm reads it and starts showing these videos and these channels uh, to people that need to see them. So until mm -hmm. next time, thanks for checking it out. God bless.